probably began with Descartes, who gave the principles of meditation. It's a very important book, which has in some way structured European thoughts. And even now, Europe could not completely shake off the influence of Cartesian analysis. What he did was um, uh, division between body and mind, things which pertains to body and things which belongs to mind. Uh, he also questioned the sensory system which belongs more to the body than to the mind and critically examine the validity of the testimony given by our sense organs. One thing which he could convince people of the unreliability of sensation, he puts in the form of an experiment. If you have a glass of ice cold water and another glass of hot water. And then you have a glass of turbid medium hot water, not hot water, just turbid water. Then put the two fingers, one finger in the very cold water, one in the very hot water, and then transfer, dip both the fingers into the other water, which is neither cold nor hot. Then the finger that came from the very cold water would feel it and the finger that came from the hot water would feel it cool or cold. So now can you rely on this data given to you by the two fingers? One finger says this water is hot, the other finger says this water is cold. It's your own fingers. You are experiencing the same water with the same temperature at once hot as well as cold. So which do you accept? He says it's unreliable. There is a relative unreliability about all our sense organs. You see a thing in a, on a screen. This was not in, do, in his days. And from behind you, you hear a sound. But there is a synchronicity of what you see and the sound produced and therefore you think the, the shadow on the screen is talking. And this is an illusion. Although it looks like when the image is opening the mouth, you hear the speech, therefore it looks like the image speaking. Like this, he took a number of examples and said the senses are unreliable. So he leaves that. The world of first he sets aside as not a correct testimonial to know truth. Then how do we arrive at truth? Two and two make four, which all people agree. A is A. A cannot be A and A not at the same time. This kind of axiomatic truth which your mind accepts he consider as acceptable to all. There's this dependence on the ratio of your mind, the rationality of your mind. Based that on that, what could be an imperative that you cannot deny at all? This he took as a clue for formulating the laws of meditation. So meditation in Europe, at least to the philosophers, it does not mean what we think of dhyana. But there was a curious mixing up of Indian terminologies and Western terminologies because people, instead of using Sanskrit, they use an English or Latin termination, terminology, which they think is equivalent to Sanskrit terms such as dhyana. 
that is wrong. That's the first correction I want to make. Meditation is not dhyana. Then another uh, confusion that came to us is dhyana we very much relate to religion. Religion that is a glorification of the divine. You are experiencing sacredness, experiencing the holy, experiencing which is pure. Thus in your mind something is sacred, something is holy, something is pure, something is divine, something is godly, something be belongs to that world which you have to approach with great caution. So these are all many, many images in our mind and they all come to us and we have an idea of the sacred. And when you sit before the picture of a guru or a master or a god and you, are, you think you are meditating, you are trying to experience the sacredness of the image before you. You, by contrast, you think, I am impure, this is pure. I am imperfect, this is perfect. I am worldly, this is godly. I am unclean, this is very pure. I am helpless, this is the source of all strength, all security all help. I am a sinner, this is Savior. Thus, a plus and minus are marked in your mind. And by contrast, you see a polarization of what is very minus with you. And a very plus towards which you want to move. There's a very way the sacred comes to you. And a non-verbal dialogue is going on between you and that. And you look for some sign from what you consider divine, what you consider your savior, what you consider the master, what you consider the grace-giving entity out there to give one signal to you. I approve of your I approve of your attitude. I approve of the persistence you gave to move in my direction. Striving for such an approval. This is happening to most religious people when they say meditation. Then we bring in the idea of magic. Religion is very much consciously or unconsciously related, mixed up with magic. You want a magical phenomena to happen. Such as seeing a light before you. The forgetfulness of the body and you are drawn to something which is very awesome, august, majestic, splendid, etc. There is an impatience to get that sign. And when this impatience comes, your mind started suggesting, are you going to see a light first or you are going to hear a voice? Are you going to see a form or a formless nothing? Are you going to feel that uh, the blessing witness is coming to you in the form? Or is it going to be a big conflagration in which uh, you will feel that you are burned up? Suggestions come one after another. Man's mind is highly suggestible. And any little thing that is happening, Maybe you have not noticed that there was 
some flower which is just opened in the garden and its fragrance is coming through the window and then you take that fragrance suddenly exaggerate it or you find oh the whole world is now filled with a great fragrance that's coming the sign is sign is here that means that's a magical feeling which is put together with your own sense of piety and you wanted to have a more concrete manifestation of this in a, in a greater degree of acceptance. So this is also taken as meditation or dhyana. Neither it is dhyana nor it is meditation. These are exercises in self-hypnosis. We are hypnotizing ourselves and we want to be, feel very good about it. Spiritual work. Now another variety of um, dhyana is not like this. You locate an area in you, such as the heart or your throat or the center of the breast or very seldom people choose the pit of their abdomen and also many people do not use Swadhisthana or the base of but many people go to Muladhara and these are synergic centers now in these days when we know a little more about the meridians that the acupuncturist is using in allocating the passage of, of the nerve energy charter in us and where you can put the needles uh, on the same principle these centers are located and you are not putting a needle there, but you are using an acupressure by either beating up that area with your prana or concentrating your mind there. Although you think you are concentrating your mind there, you are putting a muscular tension around that area. Um, certain degrees of atrophies of the muscles can be generated consciously by putting your thoughts there. Uh, I have a friend, probably many others know him. He stops his heart beating. What he does is put all his mind there to contract the muscles of the heart. And when you x-ray it, you find that it takes a, it becomes elongated, uh, like a tube. And instead of the regular diastole and systole, you will hear only a murmuring, a murmur there, a sound there, like that. It is a, a muscular contraction you make using your thoughts as a tool to put that pressure. That also people consider meditation. Then there is what we call the Trataka, that is a marking a point and looking at it. Very one-pointedly without winking your eyes and even when tears come trip down from your eyes, you don't relax, you just look at it until everything else in that room vanishes except that one single dot. Then the dot changes, a dark dot changes into a bright color or a bright light and then it again goes back into a dark and it slowly goes into a bigger, bigger, bigger area. 
Nowadays for children's games these are also used, the Thraddaka is used. For instance if you hold your hand as much stretch as possible and uh, put the thumb of the, the, if you are putting your left hand like that, put your right hand like this. Until you see that the thumb of the left hand is completely covered by the thumb of the right hand. Um, so for instance, if you close one eye, then you can manipulate that. Eye. Then open both the eyes. And now look through the thumb of the right hand to the left hand, thumb of the left hand. The immediate magic that happens is the right hand becomes transparent. And you can see through that the thumb of the left hand. And as you go on looking at it, you find you have three thumbs in front of two. And then you find you have four thumbs. And the four thumbs becomes three, two, and one. And then again it becomes four. Four, three, two, one. Like that it goes on increasing. You are creating this magic out of something which is happening to the power of synchronicity of the visual area. The whole mechanism of what comes the left eye and the right eye, which should happen in the visual area, you are playing with it. And in the Tradaka also you are doing the same thing. But it can give you such a thrill that suddenly everything vanished and that one dark little spot you put there on the wall is, has become a great sun, a very luminous sun. And it is giving you all the psychedelic colors. And then you are affected. You look at the pillar, become a fluid. It has no more the rigid lines. The wall, the, everything moves and changes as if it's all made of water. It's a water stuff. So these kind of experiences when people get, they say we get into Kriya Yoga and then look at all these wonderful things happening. In one week I could get all these experiences. Fine. But if you know a little brain physiology and critically look at it, the spiritual content of it diminishes. So when is it spiritual? When you do a meditation and you... So these are some of the exercises which Hatha Yogins give. In Hatha Yoga, Asana, Pranayama and um, Tradaka. These are very important. No one more. A guru gives a, a formula to a disciple to meditate on. The guru says, probably in a traditional situation is created where some seriousness can be put into your initiation. And then on a, at a very sacred moment, sacred time, the Guru whispers into your ear the mantra to meditate on. And this is Tat Tomasi. There is no mantra which is greater than this for a Vedantin Guru to give to his disciple to work with. It's called Manena Vakya. It's never said Dhyana Vakya, Manana Vakya. This is what jo, uh, Nancy said, Manana is not. Allowing a mechanical uh, thought uh, eddying 
consciousness, that you have one consciousness, one thought is going round and round. That's called chinta. It is not the linear way of arising. It's called vichara. But this is manana. Manana is you do not allow for some time your mind to escape the connotations of just the mantra that is given to you by your Guru. What did the Guru say? Guru said, Tat Tamasi. You look at the order in which Guru said, Tat Tamasi. Tat. What is Tat? That. That. Not this. No, that. What about this? Forget it. This people sitting here, forget it. This person speaking, forget it. This sound, forget it. So you go on negating, not this, not this, only that. Thus the mind has many things to negate. What is negated? What is called to memory? by associating to the word Tat. Now before going to that, you should know what this is. This is a pot. This is a loudspeaker. This is a glass. This is a person. This is something. So this is the subject. Is it's a assertion, such and such predication. This is this predication. What is this? This is a glass. What is this? This is a watch. So there is a walk there, and this there. What changes from one this to another this, another this, another this? So that this is actually not this. This is these. This is a series. These. And in all these, Separate what? Separate what? Separate what? What is this? This is a watch. What is the watch? So this is common to this is watch, this is glass, this is indicative. And what is explicative? And it explains to you. So there is something indicative and there is something which explains it. Descriptive. And is that what the Guru said? No. Guru said that. Tat. There's all the, let's say, the great bundle of memory we have before us. We go on <coughs> refusing. Until the mind becomes absolutely blank. This method is called the via negative. Nash prapancha. Whatever is put together prapancha, that is dismissed. So we are still with that word that. We are not saying anything. It's an automatic rejection so that the memory is not hooked on to anything. The mind presents a memory, rejected. Mind presents another memory, rejected. Third one, rejected. First, the, the bringing of, the surging up of memory is first with great speed. But when you go on resist, rejecting, the pace slows down. By this you mean the body? No. By this you mean the mind? No. You mean the 
Hay con... No. Then a page comes. You cannot immediately call another one, which is appropriate to be identified with that. But there is no hurry. You insist on coming to something which fits in with the word that. So all names are to be rejected, all forms are to be rejected, all body functions are to be rejected. And now we take the second word, Tat Tomasi, Tom. When the Guru says Tom to me, what do, how do I understand? I understand it as Aham. <coughs> so when I say you, you understand it as I. Guru did not say you are not, you are that. He never said. He said that you are. Tat Tomasi, not Tom. Tat Tomasi. The order is very important. Only after realizing that or recognizing what that is, I am asked to look upon that as having such an intimate relationship with me. Or rather, I see myself in that. Only when everything associated with me have fallen through. What do you call that period? When you are waiting for this to happen. That is all the qualifying descriptions of that are rejected. And an unqualified that ultimately makes a breakthrough into consciousness. Then alone you are asked to think of I. Then from your side you can say Aham Brahma But if you say with your ego consciousness I am that, it is not only really a blasphemy, it is absolutely a lie, a stupid thing. Just like saying the door is the building or a window is a building, or a brick is a building. Yes, you have only a limited notion of I at that time. So first realize that, and then recognize that limitless that is identified with I am. This is also a meditation in which you come to dhyana through a process of manana. Now there is a... This is the Vedanta. Well, that is not the Buddhist way. Or what we call the Vipassana. In the Vipassana, The yogi just sits and decides that this bodily function will not be voluntarily geared. You may be breathing, but you are not consciously breathing. No effort is given, but you watch. As you are now in such a position that you are not running around, you are really seated. You are seated. So you are in an asana.
You cannot be seated like that if you are uncomfortable. You cannot be seated like that for a long time uh, if there is no stability. Only if there is a stability, there is a, a comfortable sitting for a long time. But when you have resigned yourself to that state, which is at once stable and comfortable. Technically, now you are in a state of asana. Thus, whether you are a yogi or Vedantin or a Vipassana Dhyani or the Buddhist school, when your locomotion is stopped, when your programming of an action is stopped, stop means that you have forgotten it, given it up for the time being. And you put your hands on your belly. You begin to feel a pressure of the abdomen in the palm of your hands. And that becomes very rhythmic. Your heart is rhythmically pulsating. Your lungs are rhythmically inspiring and expiring. Everything in it becomes rhythmic. And this rhythm which you watch in your the palm of your hand, that makes the entire being resonate with it. You are not seeking anything. You are not aspiring for anything. You are only just sitting. Here at the first you are a witness of yourself. Now a fly comes and sits on your nose. It's uncomfortable. The first instinct is um, uh, uh, to whisk off the fly. Take your hand, whisk it off. But now here you make one interference. You say, that little sensation coming from my nose, tip of my nose where a fly sits and scratches. That's not mine. It is a sensation of the skin. First there is a, an immediate need to whisk off the fly, but then you decide sensations come and go. Why bother? The discomfort decreases. In any case, you are not going to move. But then you think, it is easier to whisk off that fly than to sit here and meditate on that fly. I will whisk it off. Then you say, I will whisk it off. You are now going to examine that consciousness. What is that? I will now whisk off this fly. How? My hands are interlocked. I will now release the lock. I will now release the lock. <coughs> and you just watch how your judgment is going to affect And the whole consciousness comes to the locking of the fingers. And the tension in the muscles of the fingers, the tightness of it, that tightness is held there with your breath. Hmm? 
you to deserve it. And slowly, you give enough space for the fingers of the right hand to be loosened from the cloth. And then he said, I am now going to slowly remove my right hand from my left. And watches, how do I do it? Oh, I'm making a withdrawal of my hand in a backward movement. The fly is still sitting on the nose. I'll slowly pull these fingers out. I can feel. Uh, how sometimes the finger touches the other finger. And now which, t which finger is touching which finger? Which is the touching one? Which is the touch door? And the sensation of touch that I get, is it uh, arcwise? Or is it linear? Is it a stimulus, response, stimulus, response, stimulus, response? Releasing this from my the left hand, there is a tension because it is not now supported. Both my hands are not supported now. It is as if it is hanging in midair. And I have now sufficiently pulled it out. But I have to, my destination is to bring it to the nose where the fly is. Did I pull it sufficiently backward? I think so. In that case, I should now raising my hand. If I raise it now straight upright, my nose is not in that direction. So how much should I raise it? I should bring it almost to the level where my nose is. Raising it. What is my left hand doing? Why the two fingers are standing up? Oh, there is tension on it. Relax that. Boy, relax. Why you have this tension? Rest on that belly. Your belly is weak, so just rest. Okay? Hey, right hand. I already asked you slowly to climb up. I said, slowly. Hey, what is that? I am experiencing another kind of a movement in my elbow. My lateral elbow. The biceps also have a peculiar kind of tension now coming. Hey, my shoulder bones. At this, at my shoulder bones I can see some new pressure gravitating. Am I raising it? What about my left hand? It's clinging on to my abdomen. Is the fly still there? Oh, yeah, fly is still there. Okay. How far it has gone? It looks that it has gone almost by uh, six inches. <coughs> I know if I go in that direction, I will never, never reach that fly. Now forward. 
bring it again war for which is in the level of my nose there is something else touches my hand not my nose i am now quite close to my nose hey fly go fly the fly is gone it touch my nose but i do not get the same discomfort by much person touch there oh i was watching my abdomen bring this and back to it and slowly slowly descend and when my i bring my fingers down automatically my elbows are going up elbow is going up now i have brought it again to horizontal position and bring it close closer and closer now i should have my fingers of the left hand again parted so that i can interlace two hands body back yeah hey, what happened all this while i forgotten that there is a room here full of people all that what was i then there was any i no but there was the manifestation of consciousness the consciousness which is very limited but intense to forgo all other consciousness now i have no body consciousness so this can be continued for a long time this silence which is penetrating now into me is causing some other changes in me the urge to move the urge to change wanting to do something all those leave me Suppose I sit here, hours pass, hours pass, then I realize, oh my God, I was sitting here for such a long time. Will something happen to my feet if there is not enough blood circulation? Oh, I should stretch my legs. what i have done to with my hand to whisk away the fly i do the right same thing now so in this experiment um from a body which was called my body a transference is affected to a floating a fluttering consciousness surrounded by the unconscious what are two things consciousness surrounded by unconscious so if it is done today tomorrow day after tomorrow like that for hours and hours and then i become disciplined in another way this is also meditation 
which the body is called the vipassana way. Now, I have another kind of meditation. Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Sri Ram, Jai Ram. Shri Rama Jai Rama Jai Jai Rama 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 Shri Rama Jai Rama Jai Jai Ram Shri Rama Jai Rama Jai Jai Ram I'm using a word Ram Ramenti Rama That which places is Rama This joyous moment is Rama This company is Rama This peace is Rama this thought is Rama, this feeling is Rama, everything is Rama. Shri Rama Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram Om, Shri Rama Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram Om. Why only Shri Ram? No, not necessarily. I can have another, another um, formula. La ilaha illallah, 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 la ilaha illallah. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. It hardly makes any difference whether it is Shira or La ilaha illallah or Alleluia, Alleluia. It is one tonal circulation of energy that is captivating the whole consciousness and it has also the effect of the word meaning put into it such as Sri Ram the glorious joyfulness Sri Ram Jai Ram the victorious joyfulness Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram victory victory joyfulness victory and on hearing this, this great attraction, you see Akashedi, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you can even take it further. Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Radhe Radhe. Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Radhe, 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 Bolo Radhe. That continuous trick of oil flowing as a dhara, 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 radha, radha, dhara, radha, radha, dhara. Continuous flow of love that is going to the indiscernible, the dark, that which you can, that is so mysterious. The love is generated by the mysterious. Love is mysterious. Love, love is flowing into the mysterious. And love creates mystery around you. That mystery is sham, 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 radhe sham. Radhe sham, radhe sham, radhe, 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 radhe. So by just uh, saying the word Radha, the whole episode of Radha Krishna comes, the intensity of love, the outpouring of a loveful heart to the beloved, 
the search for the beloved the feeling of the separation from the beloved the aspiration to be united with the beloved say radhe sham radhe sham radhe sham radhe 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 sham sham why sham because it cannot be known it cannot be fully seen there's no form as such all the seven colors come from this indiscernible dark color this moment it is the dark cloud next moment it is the lightning like a lightning dazzling brilliance sitting right there in the darkness it is so from this inertial jada of me there comes a sparking of love radhe 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 sham radhe sham thus to each person according to his crossroad spirituality Yes, state reverential pious miraculous captivating mysterious haunting inspiring ecstatic can go on adding adjectives and adjectives and adjectives and adverbs to it that's also meditation as we have such a uh, plethora of um, exercises and experiences this all got somewhat mixed up we cannot discern it properly but for our own purpose of um, making life not that complicated but more simple You have to choose what is most natural to you. If you are an intellectual person, you won't be haunted by Radhe Shyam. If you are a loveful person wanting to experience it as a bipolar relationship, Sakhyata and Madhurya, if you want to experience sweetness of it camaraderie of it then you need two poles on one side your pole and the other side your beloved and you are willing to transfer your importance to the importance of the beloved and thus the self here is slowly transformed into the non self and then the non where the non self previously presided there is now the greater self the higher self and where originally the self identified with the aham that is and there you have now the aspiring self which is vanishing into the higher self and thus like an osmosis like something being lifted and raised and taken up then all this kind of um, imagery also vanish you the indescribable comes you remain in that state of the Did somebody come? Do you meditate? No. You don't meditate? No, I don't meditate. So then you, I saw you sitting with your eyes closed. Oh, I forgot everything. I simply forgot. You are not doing anything. No, I was not doing it. That's exactly what happened. The doing has gone away from me. But I heard you singing, chanting. Did I? I was also breathing. you probably did notice that i was breathing just like i was breathing there is also the breathing of my soul the breath of my soul which is which i've got it as a bhajan or a song which i recited i only just first saw this sparkling thoughts of two lovers one is um, this dark one and the other 
the flowing one a flow into the darkness and the flow enters into the darkness and then it vanishes that's all what i remember to have visualized first and then what happened i don't know probably i must have verbalized this radhesha am radhesha radhesha am radhesha to study spiritual phenomena i took with me one of my friends in delhi so we went to haridwar on the banks of haridwar there was a man sitting there and he had um, some little musical thing which was he could make beat the times she was a radhe sham 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 so we stood before in thinking that we could get his attention to us and then ask hey from how long you will for how many days you have been saying this and from what did you learn it and uh, how many hours you spent on this this all what we wanted we had a questioner with us and we wanted to get up all this field but we cannot even politely cut across because he has to open his eyes but he was sitting in the I close the Radhe Shyam, Radhe Shyam, Radhe Shyam, Radhe Shyam, Radhe, 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 Bolo Na, Bolo, Radhe Shyam, Radhe Shyam, Radhe Shyam. Then I said, said, now rain comes, let us run. And so we ran. We went somewhere and we took a refuge and went to a, a small tea shop, took tea, and then when the rain was over, we and when we came back this man was all drenched in rain he was sitting on still on the same boulder saying radhe sham radhe sham radhe sham radhe sham we spent there the whole evening and it was very dark and he was going on with his radhe sham he said let us go away <laughs> no point in standing here a man can completely forget everything and suppose i take away the radhe sham from him and i will give him tattvamasi it won't work with him simply it won't work so there is a natural slowing down of the process slowing down of the process there is also uh, a new dynamics opening up with great force with great energy transforming the whole person all the memories of his past he need not bring those memories and have a psychoanalysis of it because in this dream of ecstasy all those are washed away i am not recommending here any method i am only just saying how much we are confused by term meditation and how we can have a sane sensible way of approaching it but first knowing our own so bhava we have a bhava our own bhava we have a dharma so dharma so in attunement with your so bhava and so dharma how you can enter into a path where you can be free the lords of your um miseries can be dropped off i am again it's a little wrong in thinking like that because you are making this a kind of a bargain if i do like that then i can that is a bargain here it is, there is no bargain there is no contract just being how to be that is a study in gentleness in silence the other day it so happened i asked a friend sir have you ever known 
the beauty of silence a very honest man he said inadvertently i have known the sweetness of silence inadvertently but for that silence to come and stay with us so once it so happened for about 18 months i was in a solitary cell not a, somebody put it put me there i stayed there out of love for silence aloneness the first few days of that was the most intense exposure to non silence there was nobody in the room in the in the place where i stayed so it is not somebody coming and taking away our um, silence nobody was speaking no voice was coming no sound was coming but chattering going on in the head loud chattering going on in the head protestations i why do you sit like this here you may go mad what is the purpose of this howling shouting going on inside so it is not the external environment that brings yes by low silence when the doors of your cells do not shout at you this is what tagore says tagore says my lord i want to listen to your sweet music but look at the doors of my ego making a hell of a noise here ask them to be silent so that i may listen to your music so this is what we look for to listen to the music of silence when um, let's say muddy water is left there to settle slowly clarity comes all the sediments go slowly to because the force of gravitation is there that pulling them okay clarity comes the silence has this great power now is there thing called um, teaching through silence if you are with a guru with a master with a teacher the teacher instruct you with words which you listen to that is shravana the teacher presents to you the theme of this world <coughs> she places models before you where you take a little look at him and go into your own world of creative thinking and you wonder is could this be his model 
could this be? Then there is a great undiscovered aspect of the Guru, aspect of the teacher, where only silence can teach you. You just sit. But you are not sitting alone. You have the feeling that your master is with you. Master and disciple both sitting side by side, resonating to each other's silence. Then you come out there with the feeling, oh yes, what my teacher told me yesterday, now it makes sense to me, at that time it did not make sense. Hey, what he told me as a model, showed me as a model, at that time I didn't understand, now I see it clearly. That so there is a feedback from that silence into what was of activity on the plane of subjectivity. Then for some time you do not know whether you existed at all, whether the teacher existed at all. A totally non-differentiation. Again you come back to the first point where you actively relate yourself to your master. Retrospectively, you come to know that you have grown much, you have gained a lot. You now have new dimensions. So it is not just one way of teaching and also learning. Thus learning from the transactional, learning from the subjective, learning from in the depth of the unconscious where causal functions happen in states of your consciousness and where transcendence prevail. Then you may say, all life is yoga, all life is a meditation, all life is a meditation. You don't take an hour off to meditate. In the marketplace you are meditating, in the factory you are meditating, in interpersonal relationship you are meditating, in the rumination you are meditating. In the composition of poetry, or in a painting, a picture, you are meditating. In cooking your food, you are meditating. There you can say, why, why term this? Why call it by another name? Just be this. Let this all. This lacks nothing. It's perfect. Simply perfect. Why do you want to call it by some name? If you say, no, I will try to meditate. Suppose you go into the garden and the a rose is bringing out buds. You ask me, rose, what do you do here? Oh, I am trying to bring forth a flower. As the rose says, I am trying to bring forth a fruit, few trial flowers, and then when I see that I succeed, I will start bringing in real flowers. No? The rose bush never tries, it just brings flowers. And the lark is singing, you say, hey, lark, are you doing some lesson? 
No, no, no. I just say. It's not a trial. I'm not trying. These are not exercises. We forget to live by going from exercise to exercise. From training to training. <coughs> from preparation to preparation. When do we live there? Why do you postpone this moment? You see, all these moments are only trials coming in the future. The real, the real time is coming. You are postponing things. Who knows there is another moment? Live this moment. Live it fully. How do you live it fully? Just be. That's all. You are attempting to become someone else. You are imitating someone else. Peter imitated all his life to become Jesus Christ. Did he become? John attempted all his life to become Jesus Christ. Did he become? Paul tried. Did he become? Is there any resemblance between Peter and Paul? No. Was not the best, best disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Did he become Sri Ramakrishna? He only became Vivekananda. So it is not the imitation, it is your full expression and impression of your own consciousness. Sri Aurobindo calls it Purna Prajnatva. You become a Purna Prajna, not a partial Prajna, not an Alpa Prajna, or an Apurna Prajna, or a Bhaga Prajna. Purna Prajna. That is your Prajna, consciousness. Saru, which is said to have faces all over, Sarvadova Mukha. And also it knows everything, Sarveshwara. Let that consciousness of you, which has faces in all sides, which already knows everything, just be. Then what happens? There is no Sankarpa, no Vikarpa. That means Dhyana has come. Dhyana comes. That means there is an unfoldment, uh, an awakening, a state of full awakening. You are wakeful in your transaction, you are wakeful to your subjectivity. You are wakeful and see from what source this thing is generated. And also you are wakeful that you have a ground which is infinite, which is absolutely existing, which is all knowledge and all through blissful. Purnamudachere Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnami Vajushere Om Shandi 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 Shandi